All right, update on progress on the electric tractor conversion. Uh, a lot of the instrumentation is in. Uh, none of the wiring is done, but you can see key switch where it used to be on the dash beneath the seat. And some accessory switches and then uh, down on the lower dash. Finally, the shift pattern is visible. Uh, hopefully, it's going to spend most of its life in second and then uh, the range is on the other side, but this is something that was always a pain with the Hefty G is that the old decals had faded long ago and so you could never really easily tell what gear or range you were in. So, new dash is tachometer for motor speed, which also is an hour meter, uh, emergency stop, which will probably cut power to the main contactor coil and just disconnect the battery. So that under any circumstances that should work as a as an emergency disconnect. This guy will come on briefly when you turn the ignition on to say pre-charge delay, and then it'll go out, and then the green will come on to say all good ready, and red will be fault or emergency stop. And so that's all good. And it turned out just to, instead of like modifying the spaces in the hefty g steel panels i just cut big rectangles out and then made a new aluminum cover which is going to make it a lot easier because i can pull this out do all the wiring and stick it back in whereas previously you had to remove the seat and remove this whole element in order to flip it over and that piece under the seat also holds the fenders together so it's just a pain to wrestle in and out this little box which is currently empty will get two little LCD displays, hence the sunshade. Uh, and one of them is battery state of charge output from a coulometer, a coulomb counter. And the other one is status from the cell balancers. The, so up on this fender, this fender, the contents are unchanged. It's still got valves at the front, headlights, and then the, the hydraulic reservoir is the bulk of this fender and the propane fuel tank and all of the plumbing and solenoids for the flame weeder live up on top of it. And then I think the control box for the flame weeder, which I don't quite have the patience to redo, but I might redo it a little bit. At least I'll redo the wiring, get rid of all the excess. Um, but I think it'll probably just live there. I'll make it a bracket. It can live on the fender. And if we come back around, uh, this footrest here got enlarged in order to receive this uh, accelerator pedal, which has a, it's a pedal potentiometer assembly from a forklift. And because it dipped low, I kind of had to shield it a fair bit because it'll be one of the lower points on the tractor. I added these bars, one on either side, to make it one to stabilize that now extra wide footrest, which is a little flimsy if you stand and bounce on the outer portion and also to make it easier to get up on the tractor. And on this side, the uh, hand, I don't even know what to call that thing. That bar gets the fire extinguisher. I think I'm gonna make it another, a little cylindrical holder here for the, uh, the small torch that we use to light the flame weeder up front. So that it'll have fire on and fire off devices living on that footrest. Uh, otherwise, not much has changed over here. This little box up by the steering wheel is the shuttle shift. So it's just a maintained three position joystick center off. There's one normally, normally open contact for forward and then another one for reverse. And so from the steering wheel, it'd be like uh, driving a forklift. You kind of flick it with your finger as your hand swings past and you can switch gears or directions and it'll, the controller will reverse the motor. And this box was already in place. It's still empty, but uh, I've got to start putting components into it shortly. And the SB connector to supply the tractor is mounted here on this uh, kind of bulkhead that's sloped in order to fit there. And so the, the battery will probably provide its main power connection will come out and go schlack onto that SB. The battery box is almost done. I think I'm ready to paint it 
something yellower rather than faded molested orange. Uh, I made these two uh, rainproof fan cap thingy doodads because each of them holds a little 120 millimeter fan and those are the the only thermal control for the uh, battery compartment. So the underside of the battery compartment is uh, perforated as is the intermediate shelf and then those two little fans will draw air out of the top and expel it uh, whenever a little thermostat calls for it. And here is the charge cable or the AC supply to the charger and so it goes pays out from the fender through a roller fair lead that I made and then so when you're done for the day you just have to park within 40 feet of an outlet and uh, choose an outlet that's got a full 15 amps available and then walk your cord out plug it in and walk away so I think that's about it for now. Uh, the clearance beneath, you can see that the, the frame to support the battery box is uh, dropped a bit so that the feet of the battery box, at any rate, it clears the motor nicely, but there's not a whole lot of extra space. I have to, uh, I'm gonna have to go in here again and take apart that union because I want to put a tachometer uh, sender unit in there to drive the tack up on the dash. Uh, so that I have motor speed, but looking pretty good. It's almost time for uh, painting, but it's not quite warm enough for that yet. And I got to start uh, assembling the battery pack. So here is one of the stacks. I think this will be the bottom layer. I'm just assembling them and getting ready to wire them up in parallel and uh, bind them together with strapping. And I'm gonna make two levels or two layers like this. And then there's a, an intermediate shelf in the middle of the battery box for uh, to keep the two of them separate. And uh, so yeah, I'm working, working towards battery assembly and uh, then a whole lot of wiring and troubleshooting and programming a controller and hopefully be in business driving this thing around in uh, oh, about a month.